Thanks for downloading another episode of The Ugly Truth. Or if it's your first time, welcome. You are now an honorary UG, or hug as we like to say. We really appreciate you listening and supporting the show through our Amazon and Avon links at UglyTruth.com. And now, without further ado, The Ugly Truth. It's another uncensored look at the world around you from sisters who will say just about anything to anyone at any time. It's the Uggs. Jamie. We'll talk about vaginas and boobs all day. Paula. You're not understanding my cause. Uncensored as always, it's time for the Ugly Truth. Welcome to the Ugly Truth. It's episode 194. Ugh, ugh. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's okay. I was drinking coffee, was trying to warm up my uh, whistle. Your vocals. Yeah. So, welcome to the Ugly Truth. It is inauguration day in America. Hey, we're still here. Nothing. No one died. Well, I don't know if anyone died, but no we're one still set here. Off any, no one set off any <laughs> nukes or anything like that. So, no, uh, we're all still alive. And the and, world and hasn't ended. Living our lives, shockingly. Imagine that, you naysayers. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so welcome to The Ugly Truth. Okay, so I want to just jump right into it. Let's just get going. So I am over 40. And so if you are over 40 and you are a woman, you get mammograms. Yeah, Every, you, uh, you had to give me a little lesson on this the other day. And I'm just like, what? I'm like, you had to get another one? I'm like, well, Paula, it concerns me because I'm like, I look, I realize that you neglect your health care, but this is something I that you don't. really can't. When was the last time you went to a gynecologist? Hmm? When? Exactly. That's my point. So I have an annual. And I, every- just, I just don't remember. That's all. It could have been within the last three years. Probably not. But no, I literally tell you, I probably rag on you every six months about going to the doctor. I've even offered to take you myself so that you will go. You just don't want to. No, you're right. Who, who <laughs> wants to go to the gynecologist, Jamie? Listen, I don't like going either, but I also don't want to be surprised when there's some kind of something going on. And I remember I went when I had my I had an annual. It had been four or five, longer. It had been at least five years since I'd had a pelvic. And when I went to the doctor and I said, look, I'll be honest with you. I haven't had a pelvic in a really long time. I'm in a monogamous relationship. I haven't had any children, nothing weird, but you never know. You know, you just never know. He's like, oh, well, you know, thanks for telling me. And so after he, you know, did his thing, he's like, you know what? Everything looks really great, actually. And I was really relieved. So now I go every year. I just don't, you know, once I broke the seal of going annually, now I just, I'm back to the routine of going every year. The mammogram thing was new. They're like, you know, it's time for you to have one. I was like, ugh, you know, that's just one element of anxiety that no woman wants to add to her, you know, calendar. I didn't know you had to have them. Well, see, I'm not 40 yet. No, you're not. You're not 40 yet. When you said like, oh, I have to go get a mammogram. I'm like, didn't you just get one of those? And you're like, (laughs) you have to get them every year. I'm like, every year? I'm like, are you kidding me? Because I'm thinking usually when you get your your OBGYN check. Yeah. You if you have like a a good one, then you don't have to go back for like three years. Well, yeah, that's true. Now, I don't get a pelvic every year now because I'm, you know, older and I'm not out there sleeping around on Tinder, but right. I still do, you know, I still have an annual. It's just not as invasive every year as it normally is. You're just afraid you're going to get cancer. That's all. <sighs> well, yeah. You're like I mean, super proactive. I am proactive. The doctor's just like, Jamie, uh, minor, <laughs> you're here again. Okay. okay. No, no. Dr. Fong is, is not someone I want to see every every multiple times a year if I can help it. I mean, he's nice and everything. I told you last year I didn't need to see you for three years, but... (laughs) Right. Anyway, so now I realize that there are, you know, people who have a voice who say, you don't have to get a mammogram every year. You can do it, you know, just talk to your doctor and they'll tell you if you should do it every three years or every two years or whatever. But the reality is, and I've stopped living in denial, we have quite a few relatives in our family who've had breast cancer. Yes, we do. Whether it is due to environmental or lifestyle or whatever, uh, it's not necessarily genetic in the sense like you had a friend whose mother where literally every single woman in their life 
died of breast cancer. Right. And right. so those people, I mean, they were literally suggesting that they have mastectomies to yeah. prevent it. I mean, it was really bad. They had that that gene, whatever that, the BRCA the gene. BRCA gene. And we don't have that. Actually, our aunt who had has breast cancer got tested for the BRCA gene and she doesn't have it. And so the likelihood is, and mom did too, She, our mother does not have the BRCA gene. So it's not a genetic thing, but re- realistically... Most of the women on our both sides of our family, someone has had breast cancer. Mm-hmm. So because of that, I get a mammogram every year. Now, I do not live the same lifestyle that a lot of these relatives did, but that's kind of beside the point. It, you never know what's going to switch the light on for the cancer to come and invade your breasts. Mm-hmm. So... And I have what's considered dense breasts. Mm-hmm. So it's just one of those things. And you may feel you may feel differently when you hit the big four zero, you may go, you know what? I really don't want to wake up one day and have my boob rotting off. You know, I'd, I think I'd like to know beforehand. Well, no, I mean, I'll do what's recommended if that's, right. you know, what I have to do. I'm not looking forward to it. Oh, what do Paula. the girls with like really flat chested boobs do? I mean, do they just put their <laughs> nipple in there? Or? You know, that's so funny that you said that because I told that to Daryl yesterday. Um, the, the process is... It can be painful depending on when you go, you know, time of the month type stuff. Oh, right. Yeah. But um, you, you, my hope is that one would schedule around the hormonal influx so it wouldn't feel like hell. Assuming you're as regular as you are. But I mean, <laughs> yeah, my monthly not, mammogram. Not all of us know that. <laughs> no. Anyway, so it was time. So I've been getting mammograms for three years in a row. And so this is my third one. And the thing is, what's interesting is your very first mammogram, you go in so naive and you are anxious, but it's it's an unknown. You know, you never really you don't really know what to expect. You expect that your boobs will be full of tumors and that they will tell you you're you're dying or something. I mean, that's one way of looking at it. Or other ones walk in and going, oh, this is great. I'm so glad I'm taking care of myself. And then, you know, nothing. So. The first time I went in and I did it, I've decided, by the way, that I go by myself and I go in at seven in the morning. So not only is there nobody, Lord, there's no one there and it's the same woman. She's been doing, this woman has been doing my mammograms for three years running. It's awesome because I like her. She, she actually, I think I've mentioned this in the past, this technician, she's been doing this for many, many years. I really trust her. She really knows what she's doing. She actually was a part, uh, CNN did a, like a invest, not investigative, but they kind of did like, you know, one of those things where they're going, this is what it's like when you get mammograms. A profile or something. Yes. And so she, when she worked in Atlanta, she was the technician that they used to film the machines on how they work and the new, the new fangled machines. Cause they're all new now. And she goes, I was the technician they used. So every once in a while, CNN will roll that feed and I'll see my red fingernails <laughs> doing the machines. Does she get royalties or no. what? No, nothing no. like that. But I just thought it was cool anyway. So, so they call my name seven, eight. And yes, it's incredibly early and I'm, you know, I had a lot of anxiety this year because and what's funny is people will say, yeah, the first one you're scared just because you don't know what to expect. It's the following ones that you get really nervous because they have a baseline. And if there's any changes, then they make you come back and do more extensive stuff. I'd just be afraid the thing's going to malfunction and like <laughs> squeeze and pop my boob or something. Right. Well, luckily it's all manual. So oh, there's okay. no like, I mean, some of it is electric, you know, electronic, but when they getting, when they're getting down to it, she, there's a, there's a crank essentially. Oh, it's her. Great. Yes. So I walk in and she calls my name and I go, hello, good morning. And I walk in and I have I had a incredible amount of anxiety this year. For some reason, I just did not feel comfortable. I I felt I did not feel confident that things were going to go well. I was worried. And, you know, when they're looking at the machine and, you know, after they take the picture, you're like, is she taking an exceptionally long time to do this? God, (laughs) is she looking at something? Oh, please wait till you do it. Then you'll know. But. Anyway, she goes, what's your date of birth? And I told her my birth date. And she goes, you do not look 40. And I said, oh, she's like, are you here? For, are you having symptoms? And, da, da, da. and I go, no. I go, Mary, you do this every year. I go, this is the third year you've done my mammogram. I specifically schedule them at this location at this time because you are the one that does them every year. She's like, 
I remember you now. I Every year you ask me how old I am because you say I couldn't possibly old, be old enough to have a mammogram. And so we have this joke now. Now I have a running joke with the lady. So you go in and, you know, it's really it's weird how initially you, you're like, wow, I'm topless in front of another human that I've only known three times in my life. Don't you wear like the little paper vest? Well, they give you these lovely cloth open open front you right. know, gowns. But to get your boob on this tray, you have to take off half of the gown and you're literally draped. Your body is almost draped over this machine so they can get your boob in there and then they slow it down and i mean she's like manhandling your boob you know oh, like she's really touching it? oh totally because i thought get you it. had to touch it to put it in there no they do everything and oh, so God, that's she gets weird. it all fitted on there and it's it's not sexy and she gets it all fitted on the on the plate and then it she lowers it and she goes is it hurt and i go no i'm good and she's like all right and it's so funny when i'm thinking i wonder if there's women who go oh no you can go much harder than that gross <laughs> <laughs> so then she cranks it and it's uncomfortable. What does she do with like a tidy boob? Like use the, her her fingers? I well, mean, what's, what's interesting is I told that to Daryl. I said, "Man, I go, you know, it's 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 not comfortable. It's it. I would painful is too strong of a word, but it is uncomfortable." And I said, "I don't know how women with really small breasts do this because I mean, she had a lot to work with with me. But if you have tiny breasts, I mean, you're probably really arching your back and sticking it in there and." It's got to be difficult, and it probably I mean, is more what painful. What does she use? She just like puts it between her two fingers, like it's like a like a <laughs> cigarette, and just you know tosses it in there. What if you're breastfeeding? Does it just squirt everywhere? Uh, I don't. I, you know, I'm sure that they have protocol for things of that nature. Tap like t- you know tape a <laughs> cotton ball on the tip or something. You know, and then the other thing that they do before they before she does the MRI is if you have any kind of mole or significant freckle, they put a sticker around it so that the people who are reviewing your MRI will not think that it's a growth. They'll they'll realize that they'll say, oh, this thing that's circled right here with this little thing is not internal. It's external. So I have a I had a I had two of those. And so I'm like, yeah, I go put them on there because I don't want anyone calling me thinking that I have something. And then when they see me go, oh, you have a large mole there. Just kidding. You're fine. Right. You know, that would be embarrassing anyway. Yeah. So then she did it. And for me, it's like I will I will take the extra discomfort if it means a more clear view of the inside, you know, so although it hurts a little bit, I'm like, do it because that way there's nothing left it to hide. Like you can see everything. So for me, it's like I'll deal with the pinching and the uncomfortableness. Ow. But, I, you know, I'm kind of curious what it must look like from afar. <laughs> you know, this I'm woman's, sure it looks weird. It probably looks like torture <laughs> is what I'm thinking. Jeez. So it's funny because I'd probably be sad that my breasts are that pliable, to be honest. Um, you know, the thing is, is that my boobs are incredibly perky They're They do not sag like you would think they would. That's why a lot of people, like, my own doctor doesn't realize how old I am when he's like, well, what are you, like, mid, late 30s? I'm like, Dr. Fong, would you please look at the file? I'm I'm starting to question your ability. Yeah, he's really. He's like, well, your breasts are, and, and he wasn't saying it in a sexy way. He's like, your breasts are incredibly firm. Youthful. They're firm. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, well, thank you, but no, they're not. So let's make sure that they aren't riddled with cancer. Well, right. You know? Come on. You say firm. I think cancer. I think tumor. Come on. So anyway, so she did both. And now last year, I actually had some bruising. For after it? Like the next day. Jeez. Yeah, the next day. Today, I have a little bit of, of tenderness right above the nip area. But ah. other than that, I mean, I'm doing good. Now, I realize some people go, well, you shouldn't feel anything. I'm like, well, I don't know about that. I... I think that, you know, depending on your skin and your sensitivity would indicate whether or not, you know, it hurts. So, of course, like I said, I had a lot of anxiety. So I slept maybe an hour. I was awake all night long. Oh, my God. I got home from it and I'm like, okay, well, it's done. Now the waiting begins. (laughs) It could be two weeks before I hear anything. You won't sleep for two weeks. No, I'm, you know what? I'm feeling good. And she's so sweet. She's like, you know what? She goes, she can always tell when some, when someone's really struggling. And she, so I go, okay, well, thank you very much. She goes, you're welcome. She goes, Jamie, I didn't see anything that jumped out at me. I'm, you know, I'm telling you that if they do call you, it would be a surprise. And I said, okay, well, thank you. 
and then you know she's really sweet and that's why i like her and so what sucks about it is that now I think I've told you, we have like the Cadillac of health insurance. We pay a shit ton of money to have the very best insurance we can have. Yeah. We can go anywhere in the world if we wanted to. Somehow, our insurance company did not negotiate with Sutter. And so now, effective January 1, I no longer can go to any Sutter facilities. And in California, Sutter and Dignity Health are the two main, at least where we live, are the two main medical facilities. They, Pretty they much, have, yeah. the, I mean, there are others, but those are the two main ones that you hear about. Well, this is a Sutter facility. And Uh-oh. so unless it's negotiated next year, I won't be able to go. I mean, I could go back, but it would be totally out of pocket. And you know what's interesting about insurance companies is, mm. is that they don't let you know these things in advance because. Uh, no, they don't. We had this very similar problem with an urgent care we've been going to mm-hmm. probably for the last 10 years or for however long we've lived in Elk Grove. Yeah. So we had taken Crystal there when she, we thought she broke her toe. Oh, right, right. I got in the mail the other day a $250 bill from the urgent care. And I'm like, what is this? And it says insurance, no payment. And so I looked up the claim online and it said provider not in directory. So I looked up and effective whatever date, it was December 1st, the -hmm. provider was no longer a, a preferred provider. Yeah. So they weren't mm-hmm. going, they didn't pay the bill. So I'm awesome. just like, and when were you going to tell us this? <laughs> because we've been going there for 10 years. Yes. The thing was, is that I had scheduled this appointment because, because of the nature of the appointment, they, uh, they book up really, really fast. And so my appointment date is mid January. So what I had to call in like the end of November. So when I called, I got my appointment all said and done two days before my appointment we got the letter that I couldn't go there I mean I could but it would be out of network and therefore the insurance won't pay and they will pay you know we thought well they'll pay out of network fees and then that's we'll what have, I thought we'll have more but they you can't even go there if you that's, go there you're on your own that's what exactly what I thought because usually they'll pay a portion it'll just be a lower percentage right so me being me I said well I don't if I reschedule now I won't go till almost March because there's a wait especially for mammograms it's just ridiculous it's really hard to get in quickly I started googling how much does a mammogram cost because I'm like I don't want to change my appointment I don't want to not see Mary she's gotten my trust at this point now I've got to go somewhere else and so, uh, you know, of course, I have a couple of friends like, oh, you'll love Dignity. They're so great. I'm like, no, it doesn't matter. This is where I want to go. And it's so funny how you get attached to places oh, and, no. you know, your insurance is telling you, no, you may not go there. So anyway, I went ahead and kept the appointment and I went. You we convinced yourself that your insurance company was going to pay the non-provider oh, no, portion. no, we contacted, we have a care provider, we have a representative we can call. Oh, so you knew they weren't going to pay anything. Yeah, we knew. We confirmed it. And So how and, much was it? Well, it was the appointment. Well, we have an HSA account, which means okay. that they take out, you know, we have a credit card to pay all of our out-of-pocket expenses. You have the money saved. Yes. And so with that being said, I can afford to pay it. It's not outrageous. It's only, see, the thing that was concerning me was... Let's just say everything goes swimmingly and it's this fee and it's affordable because mammograms aren't unaffordable. They're actually, if you really desperately needed one, you could afford to pay cash for one. But the problem is, is that if there's any other thing that went wrong, like if she said, you know what, let me get somebody and then they decided to do a needle biopsy. Now I'm screwed because now I'm at a place that doesn't accept my insurance. Right. So I would have to say, I'm sorry, I can't. And then I'd have to desperately try to find someone to give me another mammogram and start the whole process over well, again. You'd have to just take the take a copy with you. And if they would, if they would give them to me, you they know, would. so it, the point is, is that I was so stressed about this go progressing beyond just the average MRI that it was going to be, you know, an, an ordeal. And so I started going, maybe I should maybe I should just not do this. Well, because- yeah, you're being ridiculous. What do you mean? You should go where your insurance covers 
it. Yeah, but I found out two days before the appointment. And and like I said, the, the cost we could afford to pay on our HSA account, because luckily we've been pretty healthy. So we have a significant savings so we can afford to pay this one price. So next year, if they don't renegotiate with Sutter, I'm going to have to go somewhere else. And it's going to suck, but, mm. you know, I'm still going to do it. But it's so funny because it's like, especially if you're very fortunate to be able to have employer benefits that allow you to have the ability to be able to go anywhere you want. Being told you can't go somewhere, you get really indignant. You know, you get like, no, oh, yeah. I don't think you understand how much we pay a month to do whatever we want to do oh, as far yeah. as it comes to our health care. Now, suddenly you're telling me I can't do this. Get your shit together, people. Mm-hmm. So yep. anyway, it's frustrating. I understand. <laughs> I completely understand. And you hate it because you go to the doctor. You're like, I've been coming to you for a decade. Why are you turning me out? What is this? Doesn't matter. It, no. And it may not even have been them. It could have been the insurance company. It was the insurance refused, company. They refused yeah. to you know, negotiate or something they just, like they that. They couldn't come to terms. And so therefore, we no longer are seeing you, you you outcast they, they wanted to raise the rates or they wanted right. to you know charge whatever i don't know mm-hmm. i hate dealing with insurance oh my stuff. god it's the worst i've done it for years with my hr career and yes. you know trying to explain it to people and i'm just like well basically you're just getting the shaft that's really what it is <laughs> there is no better way to explain it that's what sucks and because it's happened to us before with other things where we can't we can no longer go here or there or whatever what sucks is that you think at least i naively thought hey if we're paying for the best available to us we shouldn't counter these issues like we should never encounter being rejected from somewhere but it doesn't matter Mm -mm. that's the thing is it's an equalizer insurance is is a great equalizer it doesn't Mm -hmm. matter how much you make Or what kind of insurance you have, someone's going to say, I don't think so. Not today, Mrs. Minor. Not today. No, it's true. It's fucking annoying. Well, and that's just the thing is, is you're paying for the best, the best insurance that the employer is willing to offer. Right. There are premium plans out there where you literally can go wherever you want, but your employer is not willing to offer those because they cost too (laughs) much. Well, of course. Of course. So, oh, well. Anyway, so, you know, easily remedied. Let's just hope that uh, all is well. In two weeks, I won't be telling you that we have an appointment (laughs) somewhere. Well, you're going to have to go somewhere else. I suggest UC Davis, but... Uh, yeah, I've heard that too. You know, That's where I'm not, I go. I'm, yeah, I'm not. I, I'm not concerned about my options. I, it, this was more of a comfort thing than. Yeah, than I anything. agree. I mean, I if could get gonna... there in five minutes, in and out. I was literally home before. You know, within less than an hour. I can only imagine all the uh, <laughs> the uh, jokes and things that producer Dub has been, or the <laughs> massaging that he's been offering to you. You know, you you know what? Because of my um, demeanor over the last twenty four hours prior to that, uh, no. Oh. No, there's been there's been no offering for anything sexual because oh, okay. I was like white as a ghost. He's like, well, does it hurt? And I'm like, yes, yes, it hurts. He's like, well, I didn't know. I go, let's put your penis in one. Let's see how that goes. Yeah, I would love really. to see that. Wouldn't that be fun? The Ugly Truth Podcast will always be free. So we appreciate you supporting the show by shopping on Amazon via our links on UglyTruth.com. Here's Jamie with her Amazon pick of the week. Hey, Hugs. Well, 2017 is here, and it's all about the new. We already think you're pretty fabulous, so what in the world could you possibly improve? How about your music? Right now, you can try the Amazon Music Unlimited for free for 30 days. If you love it, you can customize your membership to fit your lifestyle. And don't we love our options? Yes, we do. So go through the Ugly Mall, click on the Amazon link, and check out the free trial for Amazon Music Unlimited. Thanks, Hugs. Bye. You can get this deal and literally anything you could ever want from Amazon and support our show at the same time by visiting UglyTruth.com slash shop. Thanks for helping out the truth. Let's get back to the show. of penises and private parts yes so did you look up the link 
I did look up the link. So right. t- explain to me what this <laughs> is, because I'm not understanding why one would want to do this. Well, OK, so I saw a blurb of an article on one of these random social media sites. I don't even know what which one. I've seen it on several. There is several people that do this, but the one that they highlighted it was uh I can't think of her name, but it's on Etsy, which I actually like Etsy very much. It's a very mm-hmm. cool place. This person, like many on Etsy, are making vagina necklaces. And these vagina necklaces are not only it's the inner vulva essentially and then where the hole would be that she personally has been filling it with items like glittery things or an eye (laughs) like a cat eye i can only assume it's made out of some kind of uh, polymer clay or something like that there remember back in the day when we were younger and the big thing because our mom made made it for a while was those Opaly earrings that were made out of like that plastic oh, that you could yeah. heat up and mold. you had to heat, like you had to boil it first and yes. then you had then you could form it and yes. so it's the same kind of thing it reminds me of like abalone shell yes mat- like a uh, coloring mm-hmm. and then you form an outer labia and inner labia and then inside the inner labia where like the little like turkey gobble thing would be <laughs> yes it's filled with glitter and then mm-hmm. there's an actual clit with like a pearl i yes. guess <laughs> or some other jewel like thing i wouldn't say a pearl exactly cuz it's kind of like fleshy color so maybe like a peach pearl but mm-hmm. and then in other ones where there's glitter in some mm-hmm. and and like where like i said the turkey gobble thing would be yes there's actually like eyes like cat eyes Yes. She but calls them galaxy puss girls. But they're actually like pendants. So yes. you you put you hang them on a necklace and mm-hmm. you wear them. Well, some people would wear them. I wouldn't wear them. I would but... like to know who wore them because when I posted it on our Facebook page, on the Ugly Truth Facebook page, and I said, Who would wear these? Would you wear one? Everybody's like, Hell no. And I'm like, Well then who's wearing these? Like, who's buying them? They're like thirty five bucks a piece. And there's, a, you know, like I said, I'm looking at them all now. The, the maker, her Instagram is mullum underscore moonflower, M-U-L-L-U-M underscore moonflower. And so she's posted a variety of them. She's got some with crystals, with a brass chain, I mean, one with a mirror in it. <laughs> so oh. you can look. There's one with cat's eyes, so which I thought were... You look at yourself without having to look at yourself. She called them the all-seeing eye vagina necklaces. Now, do what you want. I just don't think I would personally ever wear one of these. And I would love to know who is. Well, they come from Australia. So perhaps uh, our friends down under. (laughs) Literally. Maybe that's why she's doing it. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) But I was like, and uh, they're called Yonis because Yoni is the name of the vagina. Yoni is a symbol uh, for the vulva. (laughs) It's a, it's a Hindu, uh, there's a, it's, it's very ancient name, symbol type thing. Anyway, so that's what this is all about. And I'm like, is this, is this something to do with, you know, women embracing feminism again, or, you know, trying to, you know, is that, is that what's happening? Is that now we're, we're really going to get into did this happen in the 60s when Nixon was in office? I mean, is this the kind of shit that happens? The the uber feminism movement? I mean, I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm just asking because yeah, I can I tell know. you that I would not wear a vulva brooch personally. I've got mine. I love it, but I'm not going to put it on display for all, all of y'all. I'm just not. So I'm just like wondering who's wearing them and why are they selling out and what's, I mean, are they buying them to just support this movement or i don't i don't get it and she's not the only one if you google vagina necklaces you will come up with like a million different things all kinds of people making these things and i'm just like what am i missing because <laughs> i have one and not a necklace i'm in a vagina i, was, I have one <laughs> i was just gonna say i'm like what <laughs> then what do you do with yours i'm trying to understand i just i really want someone to explain it to me because i think i'm i must not be getting i'm not in on it 
I think it's like a hippy dippy thing and it's very like a women's liberating thing. I'm trying to go through the reviews here to see like what people are saying. I'm not seeing a lot of uh, buyers for these necklaces. Uh, This particular person that I saw on her Etsy site, she only makes like a handful of them. She doesn't make like a hundred of them. She makes like eight. And so maybe that's why they sell out so quickly because she only makes a few and somebody's like, oh, this is a great joke. I'm sending this to all my ladies or something. I don't know. I don't know. So so that's that's exactly what you want to see as your uh, (laughs) your review. Oh, my God. This is so funny. It's a total joke. Gag gift. I'm going to do this for my next bachelorette party. You're not understanding my cause. (laughs) (laughs) This reminds me um, a few years ago. This has been quite a while ago. But do you remember when we did the vagina episode and we talked about Yoni massage? Where you could go and get your your vagina massaged. Yeah, isn't that where you basically just go and get off? Someone masturbates you for Ugh. 20 minutes or whatever. Remember? And we God, were talking about I if it was a good looking that. guy. Oh, that's right. And then remember that we also talked about like <laughs> steaming your vagina. And, yes. Like. Bleh. And do you read? Okay. Gwyneth Paltrow has become obsessed with her vagina and all oh. things vagina. <laughs> I read something about that, and they're just like, do you really think you should be selling something like that on your website called Goop? <laughs> so that's only, the name of her website is I Goop. I know. So not only has she been known to steam her vagina, when we've Gross. talked about the vagina steam, we talked about that many years ago, where women in LA and New York or wherever, I mean, there was some in, uh, I think in Georgia is where all the yoni massage was going down. Yeah, that's but right. you can sit on a toilet that's made out of wood and underneath you is a huge steaming pile of herbs and you sit on it and you let your cooch be steamed open and apparently it's supposed to release the toxins and make you feel clean or whatever and yes he, I, so and you, can baths. Actually, you can actually do it where you're like back to like there are several chairs and you can sit like back to back with your friends or whatever and do it i don't think you and i would ever i mean i wouldn't maybe would as do a it? joke like if we were like doing it from like the the waist up and we were gonna like post it on youtube or something i think like you, that i think you have I, they put you in like these tent like kind of like when you go <laughs> when you go to the hairdresser and you put on the sheets i think you wear something of that nature and then you sit that's like getting a Dutch oven from your own vagina. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do that. that. Paula, seriously, can you imagine the odors? I mean, well, I mean, God. hopefully they wouldn't be bad, but I mean, I wouldn't want to like have okay. steam come up into my. I'm like, oh my god, I'm getting my own steam. Can you even imagine? And then what if what if it was coming out of the back of someone's neck? Oh my god, I'd be like, Jamie, your steam's coming up into my hair. <laughs> it's like I smell like cooch now. What's going on? Yes. I need to wash my hair. There's no way. I mean. There's just no way. I mean, no, no. You know what? Please. No, I'm not. I'm not. You know what? You can steam your own vagina. Go for it. But, you know, showering is equally as effective. Take an herb bath. Go to one of those spas and like, you know, do something (laughs) earthy or something like, you know. I don't, I don't understand the whole steaming. The, and who is she steaming her vagina for, really? She's Seriously. been single for like six years. Right? <laughs> I don't get it. And now, back. Like, and what, I think, what, are you tra- what are you hoping? That's some sort of, you know, like call, <laughs> like mating call? It's not. <laughs> woo woo! <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, seriously. <laughs> or it's like you're sending. Uh, what do they call that when when uh, Native Americans would do the smoke signals? Are you Seriously. Doing steam signals? Oh, Goop is steaming her vagina. Everyone, what is There's that the smoke? Cloud. Does that say I need to get laid? What? What does that say? Dot dot dot. What? <laughs> okay. Right. And then the other thing, and I think that she's been promoting this for quite some time, and it's just raising. Like I said, it's all things vagina right now, which I don't understand. But she has these yoni eggs that she sells. There's a black one and a pink one. And the black one apparently is the starter. And it's like, it's an inch and a half. It's like 1.7 inches long and like 1.2 inches wide. So it's like a tampon. Okay. A a little wider a tampon. But anyway, you're supposed to put it up in your hoo. And then it's supposed to cleanse and, you know, obviously kegel and whatever else. And if you really are ready to take the next step, you'll buy the pink one because that one apparently gives you more feminine energy, multi-orgasmic abilities, additional kegels. And it's the same size, by the way. It's just a different color. 
So I thought I read actually somewhere that doctors are discouraging the purchase yes. of these eggs. And shockingly, they're sold out online oh, on God, Goop. That's they're terrible. sold out. They're sixty dollars. They're that's... sixty dollars and they are sold out. People who are you? That's Please terrible. tell me what they, person they is buying so, this. Sadly mistaken when they went to go open it and realized it was just a Cadbury egg. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I can't even eat this. By the way, ladies, you can go to your local sex stores and buy the same thing for like Get $10. some Ben Wobbles. Yeah, Jeez. get a Ben Wobble and throw it in there. And they're a lot cheaper. Figure your crap out. And those things are made of steel. Right? At least they're sanitary. I mean, aren't stones a bit porous? I mean, wouldn't that be disgusting? Wouldn't that be like a haven for bacteria? What do you need an egg for? I mean... And then someone's going to be dumb and go, oh, well, this rock in my backyard is equally as round. Maybe I could just use this. Right. People are going to start shoving things up their hooch. Why? Leave it alone. It's doing its job. It's fine. <laughs> it was, it, that reminds me. <laughs> Hold what? on. <laughs> what? Remember the time that... Um, <laughs> It was either me or it was uh, my son that we had an earache and people were posting all these like remedy because I posted it on Facebook and people were posting all these remedies and people said, you know, like, we'll try some olive oil or try, you know, I heard you can add like garlic or blah, blah, blah. And so one, I of, do the, remember one of my friends, she's just like, no food in the ear. <laughs> Because so. <laughs> eventually it sounded like I was making pasta, you know. Like, but anyways, the point is, is God. like, you know, if you think about all these things that she wants you to put up there, and it's just like, where, you know, the stuff's got to go somewhere. Yeah, you know? right. Like it's got to absorb, or it's got to exit, or you know, I just, Ugh. I don't know. I don't know. No, I don't I'm not, get it. I'm not too excited about sticking, you know, I get kind of nervous if I have like a yeast infection or something and I got to put all that cream <laughs> in there. Oh, know. I just found something. Yoni massage for women at home. Yeah, it's called masturbating, you <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Self Yoni massage. Be your own giver. Do it yourself. Follow yeah, along practice. Duration. 36 your, minutes? I, I you like need 36 get, minutes? Get yourself a silver bullet in 30 seconds. God. And again, people. People. Use our Amazon link through the Ugly Mall the yeah, Ugly right. Truth website. Go to Amazon. Google Silver Bullet. It's the best ten bucks you'll ever spend. Seriously, it is the best. You, if you do not know how to, if you do not know how to have an orgasm, this will get you there. Right. I guarantee. I guarantee it. You will get there. God. Seriously, do it, ladies. Do not put an egg in your hooch. No vagina eggs. You don't when need it's, steam. You don't need, you no. know, pasta. You don't need don't anything up there. You just. <sighs> this is along the lines that the, the yoni massage and all that. This is along the lines of those people that were paying to cuddle others. Oh, God. Because I, they you know what? I that. meant to look up to see if that store was still around. The cuddle store? I'll have to look up and we the should revisit some of the things that we've talked about and right? do like updates, Seriously. you know, to see if they're still around. Time to cuddle. Cuddling business. I know the 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 edible anus chocolates company is still around. Yeah, because I actually was going to get you some for Christmas. That would have been awesome. I but they were loved sold it. out again. You know what? That is a very popular thing. It just it is. must be. That's hysterical. well. What they do is they they don't the company is actually not in business. Mm -hmm. They now outsource it to like five different vendors in oh, the UK. Oh, interesting. So, but all five vendors were sold out. Well, it's fun. It would be yeah. great to have it. I mean, why not? Okay, let's see. The Cuddle Connection is the the website is still active. Some of the photos are frightening. <laughs> I will be honest with you. <laughs> well, they not. were frightening to begin with. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, okay, their their website hasn't been updated since 2014, but that doesn't mean anything. $59 for a one-hour cuddle session. The 90-minute cuddle session is offered at $79. There's a two-hour cuddle session for $99. Oh, but now they're doing off-site cuddles for the ill, the elderly, hospice patients, veterans, and pets. So now they're just straight up like... They're, they're pretty much hugging anybody. Straight up prostitution. Well, I mean, I, you know, I don't know. Do they have a phone number? Yes. You going to call it? Yes. Okay, hold on. Um, <laughs> there's literally no phone number. I'm, oh. 
damn it i was really hoping that there was a phone number but there's not it's like it's all deleted there the, the site is still up Proudly listening to Karen Culling for one year, but that was in 2014. So. Yeah, I think they're probably out of business. Yeah. I'm not surprised. We talked well, about no. that when we talked about it in the first place. We said, like, let's see how long that lasts. <laughs> yeah, it's over. It's over. Sorry, Cuddle Connection. Guess hugging doesn't last that long. It's a, it's the, it's a gateway. Well, of course. Everyone was going to go down there and be a filth. <clears throat> then they're going to start trying to get a little feel, a little uh-huh. It's like, have you heard of a yoni massage? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay, so enough about the vagina. I love mine. Get the bullet through Amazon, please. $10. Save your life. So a little bit of celeb news before we go into our ugly and awkward moment. So, okay, do you watch Project One Way Junior? No. You know what? I used to watch Project Runway all the time, but yeah. I kind of lost track of it. So, no, I, I haven't. Now, you know how much I love other people's children, but Project Runway Jr., this specific season, has been really good. And a lot of it is because they're taking kids that are like 16 and 17. Oh. So they're, they're older. They're, they're on the cusp of going to design school or fashion cool. school. They're, they're more talented. There's two that left that I'm in right now. There's two left. One got let go last night and there's one left. She's going to be let go next week unless she can pull something out of her butt. She's done. She's completely out of her comfort. I mean, th- these other people are like, they're, they can just designed their asses off so it's really been great the judges are christian siriano who i absolutely love i love him he's amazing he's from the original project runway many years ago and he just like heads and tails about he almost didn't even belong on that show he was so good well i mean i think he basically won almost every single everything yeah it was he was ridiculously over the top amazing season I did too. And there was a lot of great people on that season too. I know, but well, he, he was just, just basically in a league of his own. Oh God. He was so, he, it was like, he would have been discovered eventually, but you know, he, so he's a judge, some model that I can't think of her name, but everybody would know if you saw her, she's the host. Tim Gunn is still the mentor. I love Tim Gunn. He's fabulous. He's like a dad. I just, he's, I love him. I wish he had been a father in real life. I bet you he would have been the best dad in the world. He's so amazing. He's so sweet and very good. And he's got amazing taste. And then Kelly Osborne is the other judge. And yeah, I actually I'm, like her in this role. Him. Well, no one's a fan of hers, really. But in this role, she's great because she loves the kids. And she's really very tender to, with them. She's not an asshole. In fact, yeah. she's always telling everybody else, stop it. This is the best they've ever done. You know, I mean, she's really defensive because she loves them because they're trying so hard. Well, you know, she really has turned. I mean, she really has come into the fashion industry. I would say in like the last, you know, gosh, maybe 10 years. Yes. That she really kind of became a fashion, not icon, no. but more fashion like like police judge, you know, those kinds of roles. And so. she hated it. She hated that. She quit it because she yeah. couldn't she was de- and you know what the you know we're judgy but not like that they were really harsh on women and and that that whole fashion well, police thing imploded because they had her wearing like you know emmy dresses yeah. and you know that's not who she is no it was it was silly and when i first saw it and i'm just like that's kelly osborne i'm like why the <laughs> hell did they have her out on like the emmy red carpet I'm with like, an updo silly it was, it <laughs> yeah. was ridiculous so she looks like herself she's got her heads are her the sides of her head are shaved her hair is bright purple and she's absolutely herself she clearly feels very comfortable in her own skin now and she really loves this show and her role in it and then there's the one judge who is the magazine editor who is the the harsher of the critics because these people are going to get some kind of layout when they win is it nina garcia no 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 i think she's like cosmo junior like 17 magazine she's one of the younger like maybe Teen Vogue or something. Okay, I'm not quite okay. sure. But anyway, she's the more of the realistic, like, look, I realize that you think this is very wonderful, but this looks like an art project. So let's be real. Well, you know, she so, has to be serious yeah. because this is yeah. actually going to, you know, parlay into a magazine. Right. So. And Cyrano, he's the more like, this is so well made. I really, I've never seen anything like this. He's that person. And Kelly's like, right. I'd wear it. You know, so there's always, there's all these three perspectives. Anyway, right. I can't stop watching it and I'm really surprised, but I think when you get really great 
designers yeah it meshes really well and they're a little catty they're a little and they're young so they're super immature and they say things they shouldn't and it's just really great and they're super super talented and so I can't stop watching it so about a week ago I tweeted because I love to tweet I tweeted I am obsessed with these junior designers I'm just obsessed with them on Project Runway Junior and Project Runway Junior reached out to me and said can we use your tweet on our show I'm like uh yeah so i awesome. um, so I've been trying to, you know, we watched it last night and Daryl's like, well, it's just going to be in their promos, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Just record the Lifetime channel forever and maybe see it. So if you see it, screenshot it and tweet it to me so I can see it. We'll just you know? record all the new episodes and that right. way you can just screenshot it when you see it. Right. So I'm hopeful. Hopefully we'll see it anyway. So I thought that was just super exciting and I couldn't wait to tell you. <laughs> And you should watch it because you guys like Chop Junior, which I'm I struggle with personally, but this is kind of along the same line. Ryan likes it because he likes yeah. to compare himself to the kids because he likes to see if he could do it, how far he is in his cooking compared to some of the other kids. Well, when Daryl so. and I watch Chop Junior and they do the initial whatever, we'll sit there and watch it because you know we're super judgy when we watch those shows. Yes, <laughs> and we're watching them, and I'm like homeschooled. You're so. <laughs> That's the only way these kids are that refined in their cooking ability. You know, they have the time to to do it. You know, it's the only way. Uh, so Michael Ferrer passed away and that's a name he's not a big wig name that you would normally hear but he was an amazing character actor on many many things yeah not just NCIS no no I actually watched him on Twin Peaks when yeah. I was a youngster no, he's been <laughs> acting a really long time but well, he was what was sad about it is is like we're barely it's barely January 20th and we've already had someone die so I know but I mean I mean was... I guess that seems like a long time you know considering right. the streak that we had last oh. year so, God, just I mean, ridiculous. It could have been January 1st. Uh-huh. So. No kidding. Uh, so he passed away from cancer. And you know what? It was funny when they first showed his face. I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. He's been around forever. He's been acting. He's had a, he had a great career. And he's super. He was really good. But I honestly, I didn't know he had cancer. I so. didn't either. I did not either. It was one of those ones where I guess they just kind of kept it quiet. So Well, he was probably just, you know, digni- being dignified and well, you just, know, letting you his know, family s- deal with it. Yeah, staying, staying, laying low. I mean, that's what I would yeah. do. I would oh. just lay low and... You know, keep Slowly close, to, die. keep close to the family, and <laughs> yeah, just, you know, exactly. Live my life with them, and right, you know. right. Okay, so safe home to him. Um, we both liked him in his capacities. Uh, so yes. Cuba Good Cuba is it Cuba or Cuba? Cuba C- Cuba, Cuba Gooding Cuba, Jr. C- Cuba Gooding Jr. Cuba or Cuba? Anyway, he's. They're, he's getting divorced. I didn't know he was still married. I've heard Why so is that a big many deal. I don't. It's not. It just it it broke, and I wanted to say something about it. But oh. I've heard so many things about his philandering and stuff. I had no idea he was still even married. Well, I mean, I think it's kind of a big deal because I guess they've been married like a long time. They have in Hollywood terms, and I guess he's actually pretty wealthy because. Oh yeah, that makes sense. You know, well, he's work- every he, time he's they play actor. Jerry Maguire, he gets money for it. <laughs> Show me. I mean, they they play that damn movie at least like five times a month. So, yes. Or show me the money or, you know, whatever. Every time they use that. In Rod, we trust. Yes. So, I mean, the guy's got to be pretty rich. So, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure it's. I think it's been. I guess my point is, I think it's been a long time coming. One would only hope that they got (laughs) married after Jerry Maguire, but. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe. I don't know. So Jack Nicholson has decided to retire. He's no longer doing films. Oh, well, I, mean, I know he is, he's older than dirt, for God's sake. I know. I think he is. I think Well, he's I mean, at least over 80. Right. I mean, he's at least in his 80s. I wish he I had think. done like one last film to say, like, now I'm retiring, you know, or yeah. something like that. But I guess it doesn't really work that way. I feel like at the last couple of award shows that they've schlepped him to, he's been pretty unwilling. You know what I mean? Well, he's, I get the feeling he's a bit of an alcoholic, but I could be wrong. <laughs> well, he's a bit of a lot of things. I think he likes the ladies, and I think <clears> he yes. likes them young. I think he likes his vices. 
No, he's yes. a cigar, cigar smoker, whiskey drinker. So you never know. I bet you he still gets asked to do roles, but he probably is just like, uh, I don't really want to do that. You know, like he just <laughs> maybe he gets sick of some of the stupid roles he gets asked. Like, you know, if you, imagine if he get asked to do like a leading role in like some space movie or something like that. And he's just like, I'm not doing that shit. He's like, Forget I'm 80 it. years old. That's not realistic. Too fucking old for that. I can hear it now. I'm just too fucking old for that. Call Tommy Lee yeah. Jones. He's still doing not, stuff. Not getting in a space costume <laughs> no kidding the Uggs know if you're gonna go out in public it's best that you at least do a lip and a clip to help out paula has your lip and clip tip of the week brought to you by the ugly truth avon store here's paula i wanted to tell you about an amazing deal avon is having right now buy two products for just eight dollars i'm talking brow liner lip liner eyeliner eyeshadow, mascaras, lipsticks, the works. This deal is super easy to find. Just go to uglytruth.avonrepresentative.com or click the link from our Ugly Mall tab at our main site. Get this and tons of other lip and clip favorites from our Avon store at uglytruth.com slash shop. And now, once again, here are the Uggs. So anyway, all right, well, let's do our ugly and awkward moments of the week. So as I mentioned, the weather has been horrible here in California or in Northern California and probably all over. It has been freezing. It has been like pelting rain really windy and it's been like that for it feels like two weeks yeah it's been it's been an extensive uh time for sure so i have this really big heavy jacket that i got for christmas and it's a little bit big on me but i i like it that way yeah but because it's kind of big when i put the hood on the hood falls over my eyes and so when I walk, you know, in order to see, unless I'm looking straight at the ground, I have to lift the hood up. I was leaving the other day the house to go pick the kids up from school, and I was just looking straight down, walking to my car, and um, so I wasn't lifting the hood up because I was just like, well, I'm not planning on talking to anybody. Right. And so I was walking past a car, and next to the car was uh, this guy in sweatpants and tennis shoes and the people that normally park there are these neighbors that we don't really like anyway (laughs) okay so i'm just like well screw him i'm not lifting up my hood just to you know be polite and so then all of a sudden i heard hello and i was just like oh that's that's not the the asshole neighbors and so oh god so i turned my head But like I said, because my hood is so big, when I turned my head, I just turned my head inside my hood. And so I just, I was looking straight inside my hood, just sideways. Mm. And so I was like, hello. But I I was talking, (laughs) I was talking through my hood. You're talking to your hood. I was talking to my hood. I'm like, hello. I'm like, how are you? And I was like trying to, so I was like trying to turn my head and I felt like an owl because I was like (laughs) turning my head all over this hood and I was trying to like lift my hood up. And so finally when I got my hood lifted up and I took it off my head and I turned around and this person, I realized who it was. It was our other neighbor who I actually really like. You're like, oh, you're the one I like. They were already like halfway to their house with their gym bag. (laughs) Like, oh, God. just walking, and I'm just like, never mind. Oh, jeez. So, but That's I was funny. still standing. I had stopped walking because I was trying to, you know. <laughs> so you were saying hello to no one. I Because I, I couldn't figure out, like, how to get out of my hood. It was stupid, but I was just, like, you know, trying to <laughs> be like, funny. hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Who's out no! there? <laughs> you know. So, That's funny. Anyways. They're like, was, do you need help? <laughs> it was dumb. But... I, I, I don't know if he even heard me. I'm hoping he didn't. He probably heard this. (laughs) 
<laughs> Probably. It's like, it's oh, there's that our neighbor might be need assistance out of that giant car. Not sure yet. I don't know. Maybe she's myself. in a cocoon and she'll emerge. Well, he is in the medical field. He's a pharmacist. But Oh, he probably, is he your new dealer? He probably he probably <laughs> thought I was on drugs. So He's like, Oh, I know that pill. <laughs> He's just like, Oh, I I've seen that before. I've seen that He's many not- times, Mrs. Yes. So, no, that's anyway. funny actually. Okay, so mine is... I, I know yours is epic, so I, mine's never going to beat yours. It's not epic. Why is it epic? You said you had like an epic of epic ones this no, week. No, that was you last said you week. Had two. No, no, this week is not that epic. I had two this week, and they weren't epic. The, oh. first, one, the first one was really dumb. It was like this long, long one where, not long, but uh, Daryl and I went, you know, we took the family to Hawaii last summer. And it was kind of like our anniversary slash family vacation. And I forgot Daryl's anniversary card, which I did not know that I forgot until yesterday when, or the day before yesterday when I was looking for something and I found this envelope with his name on it. I'm like, what's this? And I open it and it's the anniversary card that I never gave him. (laughs) I thought you gave him the card. I didn't. I totally didn't. And so I'm like, okay, interesting. So I I laid it on the bed. He goes, what's this? And he opens it because, well, this is really nice. And I'm like, yeah, happy anniversary. (laughs) (laughs) Whoops. It was like six months old, but hey, whatever. At least I gave it to him. I could have sworn. Well, you told me that you had a card you were going to bring with you. I didn't bring it. Totally forgot. So anyway, uh, so he got it two days ago. So, but no, the other one was, um, now you know that I play World of Warcraft. Yes. And I really love it. And it's just one of those things. Now, I have a pair of headphones that I've been using for a couple of years that I really like, but they're old school that you plug them into the computer. There's little wires and, you know, all of that. But mm-hmm. they're comfortable. They're they're Razors, which is a brand, gaming brand, and I really like them. The problem is that when I get up to go get a glass of water or just or I'm done and I set them down, I have absolutely tripped and fallen on those headphones, wires, because... I get up and I turn and the wire is right there to my right and I get up and I trip over or I rip them out of the computer. I have pulled the computer onto the floor. I mean, I've completely caused damage. Right. So for Christmas, Daryl bought me Bluetooth gaming heads a headset that's Bluetooth. <clears throat> so oh. that it's wireless. And so that I will never trip or rip anything out again. And I refuse to use them because I just, I hate, I don't want them. He, he put them on my head. He goes, how do these feel? I go, they hurt my head. I You're hate like, them. I don't like them. It's giving me a headache. They're awful. They squeeze my head. I hate these. The, the, the cushion is awful. He goes, they're leather. I'm like, I don't care. I don't like these. He's like, all right, God. And I'm like, all right, listen, I'll let you install the Hero stuff. is so hostile. <laughs> I'll try them. I know, right? Because I'm like, stop messing with my things. I just like what I like, you know, but anyway. <laughs> So I said, fine, I'll try them at some point, but not right now. I'm, I'm getting ready to do something. And he's like, all right, fine. And so the other, so literally that day I was, had my headset on and I was done playing. So I put the headset down and I went to get up and he's standing in my view. I can see him in the kitchen. And I said, Hey, and I was saying something and sure as shit, I tripped. I almost like tore the room apart, tripping oh over these damn God. wires that I simply refused to accommodate at all and he looks at me he's like are you ready to try the wireless headset now and i'm like shit oh <laughs> i just i absolutely won't he's like all right well i guess we'll just continue with the tripping and the falling and i'm like i guess we will like i just refuse don't tell me like, how to live my life i felt like an idiot I felt like such an idiot. He goes, this is why I bought you the wireless one, so that you wouldn't do this to yourself. I'm like, don't tell me what to do. I'm like, oh, God, I'm such a moron. That is so funny. And I I mean, it's been something that, I mean, he can hear it when I'm done, and he hears the, he's like, oh, are you done playing? I'm like, yes, yes, I'm, like, done. I'm done. I get it. I understand what you're trying You've to do. you made your point. I know. So It anyway. wasn't what you thought. <laughs> that's what i would yeah, say yeah yeah right wasn't like, what you thought it was something else what's going on in there nothing nothing at all just moving the printer yeah <laughs> literally <laughs> literally <laughs> as i reach for literally anything and then just rip it off the wall with me just grasping at straws here <laughs> <laughs> so anyway just another i haven't tripped in a really long time though and then suddenly of course my timing just that was couldn't funny. be more impeccable 
That was so. funny. Well, I think you win this week. Oh, tripping. barely. I think it's like by 10 points. So. Well, but that was funny, though. Yeah, it was funny. Yeah, it was funny. Yes. Right. Anywho, well, I think that's a wrap for this yep. week. Hopefully everyone is staying uh, dry and staying warm because it is definitely cold out there across mm-hmm. the nation. Hell has and- frozen over, people. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Take that uh, however you will. However you, you want. Will. <laughs> Take that however you will, but uh, we uh, will rebuild. And, whatever. Uh, yes. Knock over your uh, <laughs> knock your, over uh, your lawn chair. Your lawn chair, <laughs> and yes. uh, take a picture. Anyways, hopefully we were able to give you uh, some relief from the political rhetoric. Yes, that's our promise to you. We'll keep it light and friendly and funny. We'll talk um, about vaginas and boobs all day. We can talk <laughs> about those things all the time. So uh, yeah. hopefully that's uh, what you're after. Because that's what we're dishing out. Uh, We appreciate those who visit our Ugly Mall and purchase any Amazon products or Avon products. Get them while they're hot. There's some good deals out there, friends. So uh, check them out. Have a good week, friends. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. That's a wrap. But make sure to watch your podcast feed for all the screw-ups and edits from this episode and what we call Ugly Cuts. And then we'll have a brand new full episode for you next week. Thanks for listening and sharing the show. See you next time on The Ugly Truth.